Hi guys, Chris here again from cncmachineplants.com. I've done a little bit of work, a machine is all pulled apart, um, so I'll dive in and show exactly where I'm up to with that. There hasn't been any machining or anything happening yet, like I said, just pulled it apart, and I'm just going to talk about where I'm going to go to from there, sort of some ideas that I have, things I'm going to do, so I'll turn this camera around and we'll have a look. So basically, this is where I'm up to. There's the head. That's the base. The column, just in the back there. That's the Z-axis slide, um, which I've undone. I just slid back on there. So I'll get back to that in a second. Um, I'll start with the head. So I've taken off the, the arm on the side that pushes down the um, the quill. I'm going to leave that off. I'll probably take that out and just make up a plate to go over there. I'm going to lock the, the spindle down. Um, when getting the head off, there's a little grub screw in the side there as well, which I forgot to mention in the first video. There's actually two in there when you go to take it off. So you take off these first two bolts, then there's two. Um, so... That took me a little while to figure out, I will admit. I took the first one out and expected the head to come off and you know, a little while later finally figured out that there was a second one in there. And when I took the second one off, the head just came straight off. So The first one there is probably just to keep the, the bees out. I don't know. Anyway, that's the head there. Um, I may separate these two, mount that up on a wall somewhere so it just makes it look more tidy. Um, I'll take this guard off as well because I'll have this all in the, an enclosure. It'll make it easier to get to when changing tools as well. Now, for the big axis, um, I don't know if I mentioned this before, but I don't really want to do any machining or anything of parts. Like, I don't want to be grinding down the table and doing this sort of thing. I just want to be able to fit the ball screw and sort of be done with it. Um, so I'd rather get other people to machine some parts rather than me get in here with angle grinders and cut some parts down. I've got a Chinese ball screw left over from a previous job, so I'll just show you when this goes in here, it doesn't fit in underneath. The the width or the height, whichever one you want to call it, is it's too thick so it won't slide in underneath. But you can still get a fair amount of clearance. And that's having it rest on the actual round part here, not on here. So what I saw with another build is that they machined off the bottom here or with their build, they actually machined off the top and the bottom, so they had plenty of clearance, and they just used those two bolts. Um, but as you can see, I've still got you know a fair amount of clearance under there, which you can see right through. So I'll probably just get them to machine off the bottom here, and just use these four bolts. Um, I'll still use the same mounting points, which are under here, and... Yeah, just make something that goes around this and um, bolt that straight down. The height is a little bit higher, so I will have to, um, you know, just move the plate up. So when I make the plate, i just drop some parts here. The fixed end, which goes on, still has some... It's not that it matters anyway because there's going to be a 16mm plate, so 16mm plate here, um, so it's going to sit out. I'm going to put a fixed end on both ends rather than a float on one end. Um, not for any reason apart from the fact that if I want to put the motors on the other side for some reason, I can do that um, without having to turn ball screws around, that sort of thing. So, and for when making a plate on both ends, I can just make them both the same and put all the motor mounts in them, that sort of thing. As far as the back ears, I'm still sort of debating, I know I just said about not wanting to machine anything, but 
um, that's to do with mounting ball screws and adjusting holes and tapping other things, that sort of thing I don't really want to do. Sort of debating whether to perhaps cut this out at the back here and give me that little bit extra travel. Um, just slide this table back. So with this here, what I noticed is that I've still got the Gibbs in here that there is some there is some high spots and some low spots, or well not some high spots, low spots, some tight spots along here. Um, if you tighten it up in one section, then you move it up to the top there. I've noticed a, a tight spot. So I probably will get some lapping compound and just go over these and just lap it just slightly or just you know surface it just just a fine amount just so it moves you know that's in the tight spot at the moment and I can't get it out but it's there we go as soon as I get it to here then it's nice and smooth but as soon as I get it up to here it just locks straight in so um, if I do it up so it's it's just tight on here or so it's movable up here when I get it down to here there's just a tiniest fraction of play in it which probably equate to more once you actually start milling something so um, something I wanted to avoid but you know something I have to do so I'll get in and do that um, around to the front here I will make up a plate same thing um, that's for the one on the the z-axis so I'll mill that out of a block of aluminium that one there's for the one that travels this way whatever you want to call it some people call it X some call it Y so um, I'm not going to debate with you on which one you want to call it but that's the one that goes this way and yeah again same thing um, saw another person on YouTube mounting it about there they mount they milled out a spot and had it there which gave them the extra travel which is a really good idea but I don't have the equipment to do that and don't really want to attempt it so I will mount it in the same spot which is just right at the back here it actually does hang out the back just slightly so when I make mine I'm going to make it flush with the back here um, and that'll give me an extra I don't know five mil of travel not much but again like I said I may look at just drilling a series of holes along here and then just grinding that out or if you've got any suggestions please let me know um, and that's really about it for the moment so that's it for the table where I'm up to it's all pulled apart um, I'm going to start drawing things up so I can mount plates and ball screws and that sort of thing just to get things into motion I don't know whether I'll do them out of MDF first and trial fit them because um, most of the parts I'll be making out of 16mm um, aluminium I've got 16mm MDF lying around so I might do some test trials and test runs that sort of thing to make sure that they fit and see how desperate or whatever happens so that's it I'll leave you with that for the moment and yeah I'll report back to you soon